So Genesis chapter 15, let's all stand. We're going to read from verse number 6. Genesis chapter 15, verse number 6. I'd like to preach to you something tonight that I was getting after it. Amen. I was over there in the house and uh, Sarah about had to tie me down to the chair because I was about to lose it. Amen. We were having a good, I was having a good time. Genesis chapter 15, verse number 6. The Bible says, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Amen. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. I'd like to preach to you tonight, what do we believe? Amen. What do we believe? You came to an old-fashioned, independent, fundamental, hell-raising, fire-preaching, leather-lung Baptist church. Amen. You didn't go to the Catholic church down the road or the Methodist or the Mormons or the Lutherans. By the time we're done, you may have wanted to. You may want to. Amen. But if you like good old-fashioned hot preaching, amen, then you're in the right place. What do you believe tonight? We're going to go through this and and give you a message, I believe that will help. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do love you tonight. God and I love you, and I love to preach. And Lord, I pray that tonight you would use the message to help us and strengthen our faith, Lord, in knowing what we believe. Lord, we're a Baptist church. Lord, we're a church that's established by the Lord Jesus Christ, and we try to, Lord, do our best to adhere to the Word of God. And Lord, I'd like to establish some fundamentals tonight to help us understand where we stand. Lord, I pray that it be a blessing. Pray that, Lord, if there's anybody here tonight that doesn't know that if they died, they'd go to heaven, that, Lord, they'd get that settled tonight. That if they have not trusted you, Lord Jesus, and you alone, if they've not put their faith and trust in the only way to heaven, and that's you, Jesus, then I pray that tonight they'd get that settled. Lord, I pray for the Christians in the room that are born again, washed in the blood, that, Lord, you would speak to their hearts in a special way. We do love you. We thank you. Ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You can sit down, otherwise you're going to get knocked down. Amen, because here we go. Amen. What do you believe? Well, first, I'd like to ask, what is believed? When we say, what do you believe, what are we talking about? Amen. What you believe, the word believe is, uh, to, what we're talking about is what you're persuaded of. What do you have confidence in? What do you trust? Amen. You know, if you want to study words in the Bible, uh, and, and a, good, uh, a good study tool for you here is called the law of first mention. If you want to know about a word and get, a, and get God's clear definition on it, you look up when the word was first mentioned in the Bible. And that's what you have here. Genesis chapter 15, verse number 6 is the first time that this is uh, mentioned, believed. And it's in reference to Abraham. Abraham believed in the Lord. And there's a couple things from this story real quick that I'd like to give us. Some things that I noticed about believing. Some things that I noticed about what it is to believe and some principles that I believe that uh, the Lord gives us through the story here. Look here in verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. We have a story here that God comes to Abram, and God gives Abram a promise that he would raise up a seed for Abraham. Abraham had no children. Abraham was childless. God had not blessed him yet. There were some that were born in his house, but they were not his sons. And according to the uh, Hebrew tradition that Abram, if he did not have a son that he could give his, that he could have as an heir, that he could give all of his belongings to when he died, then he would give it to one born in his house. And that's why he said the steward of his house is Eleazar, Damascus, of Damascus. He was one that was actually born in his house, but wasn't his son. And Abraham wanted an heir. And he says, God, what will you give me? I need a child. He says, I go childless. And God makes him a promise. He says, you will have an heir. 
But funny thing for Abraham, it took some faith to believe God. Why? Because we believe in this chapter, Abraham is an older man. In chapter, uh, if you go to the next chapter in chapter 16 and read down through there, the Bible says Abram is about the age of 86 years old about this time. We know that Abram didn't have a child until he was 90, until Sarah and him were older and Sarah was 99. Well, that takes some faith. <laughs> Amen. Get to about 80 years old and God come down to you in a dream and say, you're going to have a child. <laughs> And you'd be like, what? <laughs> you know, amen. Took some faith. But Abraham wanted an heir, and God promised it to him. He said, you'll have children. A couple things I believe we learn here. Number one, believing is based on God's promises. Believing is based on God's promises. Abraham believed God because it wasn't his promise. It was God's promise that he would have a child. In your life, Believing, putting your faith and trust in God, not only for salvation, but for every area of life, is not based upon your promise or another man's promise. It's based on God's holy word. Amen. How do you know you're saved? Because God said so. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe that. You know why? Because it was God's promise, not mine. How do you know God will take care of you? Because God promised he would. Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God promised me he would take care of me as his child. Amen. And so believing in a, in a Christian's life is based upon the very fact that God promises and God keeps his promises. For which God that cannot lie promised for the world began. You find a scripture with a promise in it from God and claim it, and I promise you God will bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. Believing is based on God's promises. If you're not saved tonight, you can get saved. You know why? All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's God's promise tonight. Amen. Boy, that's good. Number two, believing is not based on your circumstances. Verse number three. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. Abraham said, There's nothing. I don't have a child. It looks a little grim. Lord, I don't have anybody. I'm getting older. I don't know what I'm going to do. And God says, It's all right. Just believe. Your circumstances may not look like everything's going to be okay or that maybe that doesn't look like God knows what he's doing, but you just believe God, and I promise you, brother, it'll all work out. Amen. You trust God no matter what the opposition is. You trust God no matter the circumstances. You trust God no matter what comes your way, and I promise you, it'll work out just fine. Because God doesn't work on our circumstances, amen? God works on His circumstances. This is what believing is. If you want a good statement, here you go. Believing is not always knowing what God's plan is, but knowing that God always has a plan. Amen. That's what believing is tonight. You may not know what God's plan is. You may not know what God has in store for the future. Or you may not even know how God's going to bring it to pass. But you just count on this, brother, that God's got a plan. Amen. God will work it out. God knows what he's doing. You just believe. Amen. That's what believing is. Number three, believing brings a positive result. Look there, he says, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. If you'll trust God, if you'll give it all to God, if you'll just put all the faith and trust that you can muster, put it in God, put it in Jesus Christ tonight, I promise you it'll bring a positive result. Nobody's ever gone wrong by trusting God. Jesus said all that come, he said everybody that comes to him, he would in no wise cast out. Amen. You can believe, and Jesus says he'll forgive every sinner that believes on him. Amen. That's why I can say tonight, if you believe that Jesus can forgive, because it's not my promise to you, but it's God's promise. But when you do that, amen, it'll bring a positive result. And as a Christian, maybe you need to trust God tonight. Maybe you're going through a difficulty. Maybe you're going through a trial. Maybe you go through some questioning and you say, Lord, I don't know exactly what's going on or I don't quite understand, but you just believe God tonight and God will work it out. Believing always brings a positive result in our lives. God's never failed. He will always come through. What do we believe then? 
What do we hold fast to? What do we need to be unshaken on as a church? No matter what the cost or ridicule. See, when you believe something, you hold on to it. No matter what happens, no matter what the cost, no matter what the ridicule or the opposition, you believe it and you don't let it go. You believe it and you don't let anybody shake you from it. Let me give you a few, few things I believe we believe. Amen. That we should believe. Amen. Give you a few things to help you tonight, a little bit of study, and then we'll go home. Number one, we believe in Jesus Christ. Can I get you right here? This will separate the men from the boys tonight. What do, who do you believe Jesus is? Well, I'll tell you who I believe He is. I believe that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, and He's the Savior of the world, and He's the shepherd of the church. Amen. Who do you believe Jesus is tonight? As a, as, a, as a Christian, you need to know who Jesus is. As a maybe you're lost tonight, you need to understand who Jesus is. You know why? There's a lot of religions out there. There's a lot of teachings out there that will tell you that Jesus is something else other than what He is. You don't believe me? Well, here you go. I looked some up today just to give you an illustration. The Mormons believe that Jesus is the spirit brother of the devil. President Hinckley of the Mormons Association said himself, he said that Jesus, the Jesus of Christianity and the Jesus that the Mormons believe are different. He said they believe that Jesus was a creation and he was the result of a god and a goddess that had a relationship. Hogwash, amen. Jesus Christ is the eternal, almighty, living God, amen. And you can mark it down at this church. We believe Jesus Christ is is the Son of God, the only begotten of the Father, the way, the truth, the life. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and He is God tonight. Amen. Well, I met, a, I met a Mormon yesterday, and it boiled my blood. I wanted to rip his face off, rip his hide, but my Christian attitude kicked back in. Luckily for him, amen. But he was trying to tell me that they believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I said, you're hogwash, brother. You don't believe that. You believe that Jesus is the brother of the devil. You believe that God had two sons, one named Jesus, one of the devil. And they worked together to bring about something and, and, and all this nonsense he was trying to tell me. I said, you don't believe in my Jesus tonight. He got mad and walked away. I said, you don't believe my Jesus. He tried to tell me the Book of Mormon and the Bible agree. I said, you're a liar. Because the Book of Mormon doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. They'll tell you they do. And you don't let them tell you any different. They'll tell you they do. They'll come to you and tell you, we believe Jesus is the Son of God. But it's not the Jesus we believe. You tell them, say, no, you don't. You don't believe that He's the only Son of God. That's why the Bible is very clear. Jesus said, the Bible says that He's the only only Son of God. And He is God. Amen. That's the difference tonight. Do you believe Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Well, if you don't, I hope you do. Jesus, they, the Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Jesus was a creation and that He was not God. They believe He didn't die on a cross, but He died on a stake. They believe that only their church members will be saved and only 144,000 of them will get to heaven and that Jesus' blood is not the atonement for sin. Somebody wake up. That's hogwash. You can flush it down where all the other junk goes. Because that's a bunch of junk. Amen. Jesus Christ is God tonight. He's the Son of God. He's the only way to heaven. And if you don't believe that, you're going to die and burn in hell. You have to trust Jesus and Jesus only for salvation. Amen. Number two, getting warmed up. Hope you're enjoying it. Amen. Put your seatbelts on because you're stuck. We believe in the Trinity. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are all eternal. They are all coexistent. And they are all God. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. But yet they are three distinct individuals. I don't have to belabor the point, but we believe in the Trinity. Lots of religions will tell you there's not a Trinity. The, uh, uh, the uh, uh, apostolics will tell you that there's not a Trinity, but there's one God with three offices. That there's one God, but He does three different functions. 
They don't really believe in Jesus. And that's what's funny to me. They believe you have to have tongues and speak of the Holy Spirit, but they don't even believe there's a Holy Spirit. They just believe it's one God that does three things. Well, then how come you tell me you got, i got to be filled with the Holy Spirit? You don't even believe there is a Holy Spirit. How come you believe you gotta, you got to have Jesus? You don't even believe there's Jesus. Amen? That's because the Trinity is, a, is something that the devil's tried to destroy in our hearts and minds in America. You don't let the devil do that. You believe in the Trinity. You, you tell them at Amazing Grace Baptist Church, we believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and they are all three God, and they are all three agree in one, as it says in 1 John, and they're not the same God that is three offices. They are all God. Amen. We believe the Trinity. Amen. Number three. Let me turn the page. We believe the King James Bible is the only inspired, preserved Word of God. I believe everybody here understands that and everybody believes it, but just in case, if you haven't gotten it or if you've never heard it before, here you go. Every other translation is a phony and a fake. The Book of Mormon, they try to tell you, is an additive to the Bible. That it just adds to God's Word. What well, can I remind you of what Revelation, uh, Revelation says? That you shouldn't add to or take away from the words in this book. You tell them they could throw the, Mor the Book of Mormon in the trash because God says you don't add to what God says. God gave you everything you needed to know in this blessed old black book. You don't got to go anywhere to find anything different. You just read God's Word. Amen. We being recorded. Let's go on YouTube. Woo! Amen. You look at me, you bunch of Mormons, you can throw it away because it ain't real. It don't have no power, amen. You just trust God tonight. You get you an old-fashioned Bible and you find out what God says and I promise you, you'll find it says different than what you've been taught. The Mormons, I've, I, I did some studying and they try to coax you in and tell you that they believe something that's not true. That's also what the devil's done with the New King James Bible, with the NIV Bible, with every other added version that there is out there. They've taken away or they've added to the words of the Bible and they've taken away from the blessed old King James. All in the name of making it better understood. Well, you can't understand what God says if you take away what God says. They're phony. They're fakes. You get you an old-fashioned King James Bible and you watch the difference that it makes. Amen. You throw away everything else. You just throw it away. You say, well, how, what do they take away? You find me afterwards and I'll show you over, over 400,000 words and every year they have to change 10% to keep their copyright. You don't tell me they haven't added to or taken away. We believe the King James Bible around here and we'll never change. You believe anything different? I'm sorry. You can go down the road. They'll, they, there's a church down the road. They'll take you. Amen. But we believe the King James Bible. Number four, we believe in separated living. We believe around here that men ought to look like men and women ought to look like women. We believe in modesty. We believe you ought to cover up. Summer's coming up and the clothes come off. I hate it. I hate walking around and having to turn my eyes and my wife having to hit me every time saying, don't look that way, don't look that way. You've got to walk around and look at the floor. Can't look at the ceiling because they got pictures up there. Can't look in front of you. Man, a bunch of nonsense. But let it not be named in church. The church of God isn't a, isn't a flesh feast. It's the house of God. When we go out in this old world, we ought to cover up. When we come in here, we ought to cover up. And everybody that walks through the doors, we're going to love them. But we're going to preach that God says we ought to live a separated lifestyle. Because we can't let the devil through those doors. And we can't let that temptation keep coming through. There's got to be a time in a Christian's life where they make a decision to look more like Jesus would. Amen. We don't drink. We don't go to the bars. You shouldn't smoke. You shouldn't chew. Shouldn't do anything the world offers. Live separated. Shouldn't commit adultery. Shouldn't commit fornication. You shouldn't lust after, you shouldn't lust after somebody else's spouse. God says it's adultery even to think on it. 
Shouldn't do drugs. Shouldn't listen to the worldly music. Shouldn't listen to the rap. Shouldn't listen to the rock. Shouldn't listen to the country. Shouldn't listen to the praise and worship. It's all junk, amen. Get you an old-fashioned hymn book and just sit down and listen to somebody and sing it yourself. You know why? Because God says there's a standard that God wants upheld. He says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Where do we get off thinking that? Where do we get off thinking that the things that we allow in our lives that God thinks is holy? They're not. God has a holy standard. And God wants us to live by it. That's what we believe, amen. Now, are we all going to be perfect? No. But God wants it preached, amen. God says preach the whole counsel of God. God says make it known. And as a Christian, we ought to believe it and act on it. Amen. We believe in that separated living, and we're not going to we're not going to we're not going to sugarcoat it. Amen. We're not going to put it sweep it under the rug and tell you, well, you, you you be like Joel Olstein, you'll just be all right. You just come to church and love God. God says it's not how it works. You believe God, you trust God for salvation. Now God plays cleanup in a Christian's life. Amen. Last of all, we believe in salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. These are just foundational things that we believe. They're not an entire list. I can give you some more. We'd be here all night. But these are foundational because these, th these things will affect the rest of what you believe. Because, brother, if you don't believe in salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ, then the rest of this you might as well throw away. Because this is the only way to heaven. And this is what marks the beginning of a Christian's life. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. John 19, 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood. Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Romans 3.25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. Romans 5.9, 5, 5, much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Ephesians 1.7, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1.20, and having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by Him I say, whether they be things in earth, or things in heaven. Hebrews 9, 12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by His own blood He entered in once into the holy place. Amen. I can't read my own handwriting. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. I love that verse. You ought to, you ought to mark this one in your Bible. Hebrews 9, 12. You mark this one. because it, And this is great, because at the end of it it says, By His own blood He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Us. Jesus obtained eternal redemption for you. You don't have to add to it. You don't have to do anything else. If somebody tells you, well, you got to work your way to heaven or you got to do this and you got to do that, you just take them there and say, Jesus obtained eternal redemption for me. That's it. Amen. That's what we believe. We believe Jesus the only way to heaven. If you haven't trusted Jesus tonight, if you haven't put your faith in His blood, if you haven't put your faith in the only Son of God, the only way to heaven, you're going to burn in hell tonight. Wichita's going to die and burn in hell because there's, the people haven't believed on Jesus Christ. Any church that preaches anything different, you're going to find out they're going to burn in hell, wake up one day and realize the blood was the only payment for sin. That's what we believe. We'll never stop believing that. You know why? Because it's in the book. Jesus said, it's all there is to it. Jesus said, I've already done it. I've already paid for it. Quit trying to pay for what I've bought. It's already bought and paid for. There's a paid sign written all over it. You just have to believe to receive it. Amen? We believe the blood. Boy, the blood of Christ can wash away any sin. It's not our job to question. It's our job to preach the gospel. See somebody walking down the road, give them the gospel. See somebody at the store when you're going through the drive-thru, give them the gospel. Because the blood of Christ, it reaches to everybody, amen? 
through faith in His blood. That's what we believe tonight. Do you believe these things? Well, then you're at the right church. Amen. Do you believe in Christ? I hope you do. If not, we can take care of that. Believe that Jesus died and He gave His life. You're watching the video one day. Let me tell you, you believe on Jesus, that's all it takes. That's all that's in the Bible. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Don't let sheep's, or don't let the wolves in sheep's clothing try to come and convince you of any other gospel. You believe Christ. Amen. That's what we believe. You believe these things? I believe that you do. The other part of believing is, when you go back to Genesis chapter 15, It says, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God. And his belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and his belief in God caused him to act upon it. We don't have to work our way to heaven, but when you believe God, it will cause you to act. We don't serve God to get saved. We serve God because we're saved. And as a Christian... When you believe these things and you're unshaken and you don't move, that belief will cause you to act. Amen. That belief will drive you to do more. That belief will cause you to act out. Amen. Do you believe today? Do you believe these things? That's what the church believes. Now may we live it. May we take it home. May we apply it. May we make it ours. Amen. May we act upon what we believe. I pray tonight that everybody has accepted Jesus as their Savior. If you haven't, would you make, would you make that decision tonight? As a Christian, if you believe these things, maybe you need to strengthen what you believe. Maybe you need to go home and take your Bible and read and study and find out, what do I believe? Maybe you've had some questions. Maybe you've never heard this before. Take your Bible home. Take the verses that were given and study the Word of God. Find out what you believe. Amen. It's all in God's Word. You don't have to have a missionary come to your door to explain it to you. You just read the blessed old black book and God will tell you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. Lord, I pray the message was a blessing tonight. Lord, I want to preach about what we believe because Lord I want it to be known not only amongst us but outside of the four walls of this church what we believe and Lord we're not going to move and Lord anybody's welcome and anybody can walk through the doors and we'll love and we'll preach the gospel but we can't hide what we believe about this book that Jesus, I believe you don't want us to just sugarcoat it. You want us to live the way you, had, you, you, you gave us in your word. You gave us a standard of living. And Lord, we're responsible to live that way. When we stand before God, when we stand before you, Jesus, we're going to give an account for what we did with our lives, what we believe. And Lord, I want it to be known. May we act upon what we believe. May we know what we believe. And Lord, as we continue to grow, as we continue to live our Christian life, Lord, may we increase in the knowledge of God and stand before you one day, Lord, and hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Lord, I that's what I want to hear. And I believe, Lord, that's what everybody else here wants to hear. Is they want to hear, well done. Lord, we can't hear, well done, if we don't know what you told us to do. God, may we do it. May we act upon it. May we, Lord, all make a decision tonight, Lord, to do and to, uh, and Lord, uh, and to act upon what we believe as a church. May we be witnesses for Thee. May we, Lord, give the gospel. May people be saved, and may lives be changed. Heads bowed and eyes are closed.